Here we are in one of the nicest home kitchens. <laughs> it is so beautiful. Thank you for yeah. having us. Spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese is what well, Australian most popular dish. And every family's got a version of uh, it. The, and uh, they all as, differ. As the all of Italy is. It is a simple dish, but maybe you need to know a few tricks that you can improve. Yeah. Main component. The meat. The meat. That's what okay. I want to know where the meat is. Because I mean, I've made it with beef. I've made it with kangaroo. Mm. I don't. Well, often... that, that's something that we. Is that wrong? It's questionable. Is that, yeah. is that not a good thing I to do? I haven't seen many kangaroos <laughs> jumping around in Bologna. <laughs> the meat has to be beef or veal and pork. Beef and pork or, or veal together. and pork. Really? Yes. The pork being so much richer, beef, it's almost like sweet. You match you need that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but is it going to set me back more if I get two meats instead of one? The prices are roughly the same. I've seen also that, you know, in some supermarkets, you can now get a combo. The one pack. <laughs> but, you know, we're talking bolognese today, okay, and yes. we're going to get cracking. You'd peel that carrot. Just the one carrot? Just the one carrot. I'm just going to use a half of an onion. And then maybe if you can peel one clove of garlic, get these vegetables to be nice and fine. Having um, you having a problem there? I'll give you a trick. Put it on there, yeah. and then bash it. And then ah, it. the carrots as well. We're gonna cut it quite small. You're dicing it very finely. Yeah, we really want them to, you know, disappear into the sauce. Is it okay if I cry? Because these onions are really making me cry, which is normal. I'm crying too. Which is normal. I'm crying out of joy at the fact that I'm going <laughs> to smash heaps of spaghetti bolognese in exactly. my face soon. Well, excited. this is an Italian dish, so it's very emotional here. <laughs> sofrito is so important, you know, to get it right. So what is sofrito? Sofrito means we lightly fry in this. That's what you said in the kitchen, sofrito. Yeah, sofrito, that's it. It's but in like... the bedroom, you say sofrito. <laughs> There's a lot of things so that happen in the bedroom. Very <laughs> freaky. <laughs> so the garlic as well, quite fine. What yeah. would be the difference between mashing it through a, a garlic press or cutting um, it up? I'm a big fan of not bruising the vegetables too much. If you start bashing it up, all the oils will sit on the chopping board. It's the same Again. in life. Yeah. Don't bash stuff up. <laughs> exactly. Let's get cooking. Okay. Big pot. I use a big frying pan, is yeah. that wrong? You need a pot for the sauce because, yeah. you know, you need to keep the sauce together. You like know, in a big pool, this, you know, a car pool yeah, and the sauce yeah. instead of letting it A frying pan doesn't sauces. really do the work, you know. So a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil and then all the veggies go in together. So from now, about maybe two or three minutes or until the veggies become almost like translucent. We just give them a stir. Yeah. Try and keep them moving. Is it yeah, important? Yeah, keep, keep them moving. moving. So now the meat. Let it sit there. A lot of people put the meat in and instinctively you, you want to stir it. I'm, that's, I'm looking at it just so you gotta go. Give me this! Yeah, no, no. It's like putting meat on a barbecue. You put it and you let it sit to give it flavor and to make sure that you know it's at the end it's nice and moist and still juicy. So that looks like a big hamburger. Like a patty. burger. How are you gonna flip it? You can't get a spatula in there. Well then and... then you sort of break it into maybe four big pieces. See that color? Oh, that is beautiful. See, that's what you're looking for. So now you turn it and you let it sit there now for another minute or two. Because I'm so used to just constantly cream. Yeah, but you know, if you do that, it starts stewing. It's not, not like good. roasted meat. But so I thought, I thought it might make it softer if it's, if it's stewing. No, when you start cooking the meat, it's soft to start with, then it starts toughening up, and then when you cook it for longer, then it becomes soft again. I'm going to put a squeeze of tomato paste. That says double concentrated. Yeah. Does it need to be double concentrated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flavor, but also it makes the sauce a little bit thick. Now you start moving things around there. A splash of red wine. Does it have to be red wine? In bolognese, it's a gutsy dish. Red wine is better. A little bit of white wine is fine. You can you could get away with it. it. I'm going to try okay. a little bit of this. And then... Matt, I need you now. Mm, mm. Tomato, tomato, tomato. 
400 grams, all peeled tomato, and then we just literally squash it by hand. I have to squash it by hand? Okay. Yes. Oh, it's gooey. That's it. How okay. much do I have to do this for? Oh, about an hour. No. <laughs> so about 200 mils of stock to start with. And that's beef stock. Beef or veal. There we go. And then, see that in there? Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of tomato left. What yeah. I do normally, I just, well, in this case, I've got a little bit of stock. And then, let you nothing need, you go need, to waste. You need that. Look, there, you need the, the tomato. So, with the tomatoes, yes. I would normally just get a tin of crushed tomatoes. Why the whole. <laughs> because it's convenient. Yeah, exactly, because yeah, yeah. I'm lazy, man. That's why. Uh, to put your hands in. No, no, that's fair enough. But for me, peeled tomatoes are a lot richer in flavour, for texture as well. You know, you just make it nice and chunky. Remember, this is a rustic dish. A few bay leaves inside. Always big bay leaves so you can find them and then at the end you can just pull them aside when it's cooked. Salt, just a couple of pinches like that. Normally I do a little bit to start with mm -hmm. and then at the end you check it and then maybe season it a little bit more. Okay. Because if you put too much salt now, ciao. Game over, man. Ciao. Game over. You can't take it out. Pretty much now it needs about an hour. So I push it to the smaller burner. It's back for an hour and wait. Yep. Giovanni, this is looking Matt, good, my man. I'll tell you one more trick. A little bit of butter. Butter? Of course. Butter gives it a nice glossiness and takes away a little bit of acidity that you may get left from the peeled tomato. So the pasta is done. Al dente. Sauce in the spaghetti, okay? Wait, I usually, this put, is the, I usually put the spaghetti in the, in the sauce. Stop it. It's like putting salt. If you put too much salt, then what? You can't take it out. Right. If you do that into the sauce, and then you got too much sauce, uh, and you're stuck. So do it the other way around, okay. and you can always add a bit more sauce, sauce to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always keep a little bit of the cooking water, because mm -hmm. it's got a little bit of salt, and also it's got starch, mm -hmm. which adds flavor to my dish. I've heard that that yeah. makes the sauce stick to the pasta a bit better. Yeah, yeah. So, we're ready. Look at this. Little flavor bomb. Now, that is what you need. A little bit of cheese, mm -hmm. parmesan in this case. I am so ready. I've been, I just, feel like I've been ready my whole just life. Just remember to always turn your spaghetti clockwise. Don't you go anti-clockwise. Really? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Rich. That is so good. I'm already going to ask you whether you have any plastic containers because I'm taking. No, don't laugh. I'm taking some home. I don't know what you're going to have for dinner, but mm. I'll finish this. Seriously, thank you.